And so this is Ya'juj and Ma'juj in the Quran. We don't have much about them other than they seem to be a race of savages. They seem to be a race that is barbaric. Killing, looting, plundering. And Dhul Qarnayn, who has never met them, is sympathetic that these people are bad. He just wants to build a wall to protect these strangers. So what does the Ahadith say? The Ahadith are numerous. In fact, in the six books of Hadith, there are around a dozen narrations of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So it's not a small amount. There are around a dozen, around. Bukhari and Muslim have around six or seven. So it is mentioned in the most authentic books, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. The concept of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is found in our tradition. And of these Ahadith, is the hadith in Sahih Muslim where our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 10 are the major signs of Judgment Day and he mentions Ad-Dukhan, Ad-Dajjal, ad the rising of the sun in the west, the descent of Isa ibn Maryam and Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So number 6 on this list mentions Ya'juj and Ma'juj. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim. So he mentions Ya'juj and Ma'juj as being one of the 10 major signs. In another hadith, Sahih Bukhari, this is the Bukhari hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi actually the Mutafaq Ali Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that uh, he quoted the verse in the Quran that Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un azim yawma tarawnaha tadhalu kullu murdi'atin amma arda'at wa tada'u kullu dhati hamlin hamla wa tara al-nasa sukara wa ma hum bisukara wa lakinna adab Allahi shadeed This is the beginning of Surah Hajj and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in it that this is judgment day that O mankind fear your Lord for indeed the earthquake of judgment day is something to be terrified on that day you will see people the woman will the, the, the mother will neglect her breastfeeding child and people will walk around as if they are drunk but they are not drunk but the punishment of Allah is severe and the Prophet quoted this ayah and then he said that when will this happen when will people be so terrified when Allah will announce to the angels or to Adam, that, O oh Adam, take the people of Jahannam to Jahannam. And so, from every thousand, 999 will go to Jahannam. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, with those odds, how can we be safe? If every thousand, 999 are going to go to Jahannam, how can we be safe? What is the statistical chance of us winning? And so the Prophet Sallallahu said, I give you good news. For every one of you, there will be a thousand of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So this hadith, which is in Bukhari, is saying the quantity of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is astronomical. Beyond what we can even comprehend. Hadith in Sahih in Musa Imam Ahmad, that the Prophet Sallallahu said that you complain that there is no enemy. Some of the younger Sahaba are wanting to have a fight. You're complaining, we're not fighting. But you shall continue fighting. There will always be qital once the fitna begins that happened with the time of Uthman radiallahu anh. There will always be fighting until Ya'juj and Ma'juj come. So hadith is explicit that fighting will continue until Ya'juj and Ma'juj and then the Prophet ﷺ described them. They shall have faces that are flat, they shall have eyes that are narrow, they shall have hair that is yellowish and they shall descend from every single plane. Now, important to note, you shall fight until Ya'juj and Ma'juj. He didn't say you will fight Ya'juj and Ma'juj. We will learn. You, we will not fight Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are not fightable. Is that a correct verb? Is that a correct noun? Masdar. They are not capable to be fought. Let us be more precise and pedantic. You cannot fight Ya'juj and Ma'juj. We will not be fighting Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Fighting will continue until Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Which also means what? After Ya'juj and Ma'juj, no fighting. So Ya'juj and Ma'juj is the final frontier after which there will be no fitan. There will be no fitan after Ya'juj and Ma'juj. This also shows that Ya'juj and Ma'juj will be of the very, very, very last fitan to take place. Because after Ya'juj and Ma'juj, there will be no more major fitan for the Muslims.
Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ I swear by him in whose hands is my soul. You shall continue to perform Hajj and Umrah. And you will continue to cultivate and plant trees even after Ya'juj and Ma'juj. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. So in Sahih Bukhari, we learn another interesting fact. Ya'juj and Ma'juj is not the end of the Ummah. What is the purpose of this hadith? O oh, Ummah, you will not be destroyed. O oh, Muslims, you are going to be here, don't worry. No external enemy will eliminate you. This is a prediction and it has been true throughout all of history and it will continue to be true. Our Prophet made three du'as to Allah and he said Allah gave me two of them and he denied me one. Remember this? We went over it a few weeks ago. The second one was, O oh Allah, do not allow my ummah to be destroyed by an external enemy. And Allah said, I've given it to you. Never will an external enemy decimate and eliminate the ummah, even if they eliminate parts of the ummah. The whole ummah will never be gotten rid of by an external enemy. So the Prophet ﷺ is giving good tidings. You're worried about the Quraysh, you're worried about this and that, don't worry. I am telling you, I swear by Allah, not only will you survive, you will do Hajj and Umrah. You'll retain your religion. And you will cultivate, you'll retain your dunya. Even after Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So, even Ya'juj and Ma'juj are not the end of Muslims. There shall be Umrah and Hajj, and there shall be cultivation and planting even after Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So this is another interesting thing that we derive. In another hadith, Muttafaq Ali Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered in upon some of our mothers, some of his wives, and he was agitated. He was concerned, he was worried. And he put his finger and his thumb together in a circle. He put his finger and his thumb in a circle. And he said that, لا إله إلا الله ويل للعرب من شر قد قترب لا إله إلا الله ويل للعرب من شر قد قترب لا إله إلا الله ووو to the Arabs and this means Muslims because at that time all the Muslims were Arabs ووو to the Muslims ووو to the Arabs from an evil that has now come very close what is this evil Umm Salama asked what is this evil he said today a hole of this size hence the ishara has been opened up from the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj now this hadith is muttafaq alayh, the highest level of authenticity for us. Today, a hole of this size has been opened up from the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Umm Salama said, Ya Rasulullah, anuhlaku wa fina salihun. Will we be destroyed and there's still righteous people amongst us? Will piety not save us? And our Prophet said, Naam, إِذَا كَثُرُ الْخَبَثِ Yes, even if there's still pious people, but if filth is prevalent everywhere, the piety of some individuals will not protect you. It might protect them on Judgment Day. It might protect them. In fact, it will protect them on Judgment Day. But societies will not be protected when corruption and evil and fitna and licentiousness and nudity and fahisha is rampant everywhere. The piety of a few folks will not prevent the adab of Allah from coming. Nasrullah salama wal afiyah. If you understand this hadith, then you should make sure you are at least pious. So this hadith tells us that Ya'juj and Ma'juj's wall has a hole this size in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith in Tirmidhi, in which Abu Huraira narrates that every single day Ya'juj and Ma'juj try to dig out. And every day they are met with an angel. And the angel tells them, enough for today, go back. And so, they go back until finally, on the final day, the angel mentions the famous phrase, Insha'Allah, come back. And the next day when they come back, so the, the narration is very long, it basically means every day they come back and they find all of the work that they have done 
goes back to nothing. They have to start from the beginning again. Until the last day, when they find they come back, the work of yesterday is still there. They still are carved in. So now they start from where they left off and they break through. So this is a hadith that mentions that Ya'juj and Ma'juj are carving every day and that every single day they get to a place until the angel turns them uh, back. In another hadith in Sahih Muslim, we learn that after the Dajjal is killed, Isa will congratulate his followers and give con con consolation to his followers. And within that time frame or a very short time frame, Allah will inspire Isa that a new group has come. Ibadalli. Creations of mine have come. No one can fight them. No one can fight them. So take my servants and go to Jabal Tur, go to Mount Tur and protect them over there. Then Allah will send Ya'juj and Ma'juj out. And so Isa and the Muslims will not see them. They will be protected in the caves of Tur Sayna somewhere. Wherever Musa was or in that region, they will be protected over there. Now, in this hadith, we learn that Ya'juj and Ma'juj are so dangerous, so evil, that Allah Himself says, nobody can fight them. Interestingly enough, this army has just fought the Dajjal. This army has just fought the Dajjal. And they have won over the Dajjal. And they are told, you cannot fight Ya'juj and Ma'juj. In fact, it is so bad that Allah protects them even from seeing Ya'juj and Ma'juj. They just flee by the command of Allah before Ya'juj and Ma'juj come. They find protection in the caves that Allah tells them to find protection in before Ya'juj and Ma'juj come and they remain in those caves. For how long? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And in fact, in one narration, uh, it mentions that uh, Isa and his followers, they will seek refuge in a cave for so long that the head of a ram, the head of a goat, the head of a ram, will be more precious to them than 100 gold dinars. Now the head of a ram is almost useless. It has no meat. It has nothing you can benefit from. You throw it to the side. But they will be in the cave for so long that that head will be more precious to them than a hundred gold coins. A fortune. They have nothing to eat and drink until finally when they notice whatever they notice. We don't know. The hadith doesn't mention. Maybe there's quiet. Maybe there's something. They will say, who can go and volunteer and see what is going on outside the cave? So a man will volunteer. He will be considered the best of them. And he will resign himself to die the death of a shaheed. He's given up that he's going to die the death of a shaheed. And he will come out only to see that the world is full of corpses of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. The world is full of corpses of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And then he will call out the people and they will come out and they will see not a single hand span of the earth except that it is piled with Ya'juj and Ma'juj and the world will stench. There will be a stench that they cannot bear from Ya'juj and Ma'juj's body. So they will desperately plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this. And Allah Azza wa Jal will send a rain that will cleanse the earth, a cleansing that it has never had before. Deep cleansing from Allah Azza wa Jal. In another narration, Allah will bring a special type of bird that will pick up their bodies and take them away. So we have the removal of the corpses, then we have a special rain that will wash away the remnants as well. So this is another tradition from uh, Sunan at tirmidhi We also have we also have in Musnad Imam Ahmad the, 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 the phrase which is also in other books as well that Allah Azza wa Jal will send Ya'juj and Ma'juj and they will descend from every single plane. وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِرُ This Quranic verse. And they will pass by At-Tabariyya and they will drink from At-Tabariyya. It's a massive lake. We'll mention which one it is in a while. 
And by the time the last of them passes by, there will be no water in the lake of Tabariyya. And the last batch will say, there used to be water over here. And Isa and his followers will remain trapped in a cave until the head of a lamb is more precious than a hundred gold coins. As I mentioned this also in Tirmidhi. Then they will make dua to Allah to save them from Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So Allah will send a disease against them. Ya'juj and Ma'juj would not be killed with the sword. Allah will send a disease against them that will attack their necks and they will die the death of one person. When one of them dies, all of them die. It is a simultaneous death. The death of one person, these billions or millions or hundreds of millions of people, they will die instantaneously the death of one person. The death of one person and then this man will come out. The hadith goes on the back to the one that I mentioned. The man will come out terrified, scared. He will find everybody is already dead. Then Isa will come out. They will find not a single space to stand except the bodies will be rotting. So Isa will make dua again. So Allah will send birds with the necks of Bakhtari camels. Bakhtari camels, the Bactrian camels, the camels that have these U-shaped necks, there will be birds like this. Massive birds will come, maybe Tayran Ababil, something like this. They will take them and then throw them wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. So this is another narration. Yet another narration. Yet another narration. Ya'juj and Ma'juj will conquer everybody in this earth. They will kill everyone. Pause here, footnote. Who will they kill? Clearly not the followers of Isa. So the remnants of the army of Dajjal, anybody who fled and was not caught, any human beings that have not embraced Allah and believed in Isa at this point in time, these will now be destroyed by Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So Ya'juj and Ma'juj will conquer the world and they will get to Tur. And Tur is where Isa is. They will get to Tur. In one narration, they will get to the Jabal of Quds, the mountain of Quds. Is this Mount Olives? Is this the mount that is in front of um, Aqsa? In that region they will be. And they will find nobody to conquer. They've conquered everybody. So one of them will say, we have conquered the inhabitants of this world. Let us conquer the inhabitants of the heavens. So they will throw an arrow towards the heavens. And Allah will cause the arrow to come back full of blood. And so they will say, we have now conquered those in the heavens. Then Isa will make the dua and then they will be uh, destroyed. Now, this lake Tabariya, most of our commentators mention that this is the lake Tiberius, the lake Tiberius. And this is also called by the Christians, the famous Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee, okay? And to this day, it is called Tabariya by the Palestinians and the Arabs of that region. Tabariya, it is called the Sea of Galilee. And the Sea of Galilee, it is a massive, massive lake. It is a massive amount of water. It has fed the crops and the people for two, three thousand years. What group is Ya'juj and Ma'juj that in one generation, that lake which has given mankind water for two, three thousand years will be gone? Think about that. How much will this group drink? How much will they? I mean, I have seen Tabari, like many of you, Tabari, many of you have been to the Sea of Galilee. If you go to that land, you see it. You can, it's like a mini ocean. That's why it's called the Sea of Galilee. It's like a mini ocean, even though it's not a sea technically, but it looks like it. It's massive. You can barely see. I mean, you can see, but you can barely see the end. This all water will be gone in one group. How? Think about this. It's very strange. In one hadith, in Musanib Ibn Muhammad, he said, the beasts of the earth will grow fat and feed themselves for many years from Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So the corpses will be so much that Ya'juj and Ma'juj will fertilize the earth. And from this fertilization, there shall be a time of great opulence in terms of food. Perhaps the most opulent time in the history of mankind will take place. Where our Prophet said, one pomegranate, one Rumman will feed an entire tribe. And one leg of lamb will be enough for a large group of people. In other words, 
things are going to change. Small quantities, or maybe it's not small, maybe the Ruman will be a massive amount. In, Musa, in Sunan ibn Majah, the Prophet ﷺ said, when you see this happen, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, when you see Ya'juj and Ma'juj happen, then expect the hour to come. Expect judgment day. Expect Qiyamah. Just like the pregnant lady at the end of her labor is just waiting for the cry and she surprises the family when she goes into the pangs of labor. In other words, at that very end stage, right? Everybody's waiting, waiting, waiting. When will the water break? When will the pangs begin? And when it happens, everybody goes into panic mode. The Prophet gave this example. When you see Ya'juj and Ma'juj, this is the pregnant lady about to give birth. Nobody knows exactly when, but it's on alert. Oh, husbands, remember that time frame of your life, huh? 24-hour alert, remember that? That is what the Prophet is talking about. That, those of you who are not married, make dua, make it easy, inshallah. <laughs> that, at that time frame, you're just waiting. When is it going to happen? You're anxious, what's it? So the Prophet is giving a metaphor that every family knows this. That time frame is tense. You don't know, you're expecting. So the Prophet said, when you see Ya'juj and Ma'juj, that's the time frame. Just like that pregnant lady will be given uh, birth at that time.